Hello, fourth grade champions. We are continuing our reading of Out of My Shell. I think this is a double meaning, Out of My Shell. Uh, what do you think about that? Is it the turtle? Is it the person, the main character, Out of My Shell? Um, I don't know. We'll find out. And I hope you're enjoying the book. Hope you're reading along. I hope you're catching up if you haven't been following us. We are going to start on page 24 today. We, I'm, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. We'll be starting at the top of page 24. So here we go. This sea glass or mermaid tear was tumbled and rounded by the ocean. I rubbed it between my thumb and fingers. A thin film of dried salt water and sand coated the glass. It had that unique crusty feel that only something coughed up by the sea has. The glass had once been a bottle or jar discarded into the ocean, battered and lost for who knew how long before returning to land. The weight of it in my palm made my heart ache and longing worse. I buried my feelings, or at least I tried to, as I stared out at the endless water on the horizon. Mom and Laney's sandcastle cast a curious shadow on the beach between me and the ocean. I remembered the photo dad had asked for and dragged myself to my feet. Had he been disappointed I never sent one? I could try now, but I worried there wasn't enough light. And when I pulled out my phone, the moon disappeared behind a cloud, making the sky grow even darker. As I was lamenting the terrible conditions for snapping a photo, a strip of illuminated water caught my attention. Something about that seemed off. If the moon was hidden, where was the light coming from? I turned my head and followed the peculiar ray shining on the surf. It was coming from the beachcomber. The renovated inn was so bright, its light was extending across the waves. As I followed the beam back to the ocean's edge, I saw her, a sea turtle, possibly the same one I'd spotted the night before, was slowly crawling from the surf directly in front of me. Oh, I whispered releasing the weight of my troubles with a single breath. Seeing the turtle had a way of doing that for me. Then I watched in soundless awe as the turtle dragged herself forward. I'd seen the roped off areas on the island every summer. I knew sea turtles come ashore to nest from May until October. She was coming to make a nest. She had to be. She was amazing. Lugging her heavy body across the beach with flippers made for water seemed a Herculean feat. Tire-like tracks appeared in the sand behind her. Cheering her on inside my head, I willed her forward. But a short distance in, her head began to bob. It weaved side to side. She gently veered to the left and then to the right. Then for some reason, she stopped moving. Something was wrong. I desperately wished I could help. She wanted to make a nest, didn't she? So why was she stopping? I tried to think of a way to coax her forward, a way to let her know it was safe, but nothing came to me. Scanning the beach and our surroundings, I found nothing out of place. The light coming from the beachcomber would have illuminated any threats. Something jogged in my memory. Something dad had said about turtles and light, but I couldn't recall what it is. Therefore, I could figure, before I could figure out why she seemed scared to continue, the turtle pivoted her body with one flipper until she faced the ocean again. Then she retreated into the water. I might have been imagining it, but as light shone on her face and shadows gathered in the crevices around her eyes, she looked sadder than sad. And with the waves that swallowed her whole, my own feelings of despair came crashing back. Chapter three. Loggerhead turtles eliminate excess ocean salt through glands located behind each eye. When on land, the glands can it make it appear as though the turtle is crying. The first thing that popped into my head when I woke the next, when I woke, the next morning was the image of the turtle retreating and waking with a sinking feeling is never a good way to start the day. But I rallied. I had no other choice. I needed to get myself downstairs before I was missed and 
Lainey started mentioning my shell again. Still rubbing sleep from my eyes, I went looking for everyone. I bumped into Grandma on the staircase first. She told me, her voice laced with horror and utter disapproval, that Mom had forgotten to reapply sunscreen on Lainey and herself while they were working on the sandcastle. They were staying indoors to keep the pink skin from turning red. Sure enough, when I made it to the family room, it reeked of aloe vera. I stopped in the middle of the archway, connecting the hallway to the family room, wondering if Lainey was angry with me about our fight on the beach the night before, and if she'd mentioned it to Mom. I stood still, waiting for her to catch my gaze. When she did, it was barely a glance. Lainey was an expert marksman when it came to shooting daggers from her eyes, but there was none of that. My sister was caught up in her own unrattled dreams world, singing songs to herself and making lists. Our argument appeared to have been forgotten. Mom was talking on her phone. I couldn't gauge her mood. She'd gotten good, better than me, at hiding her emotions. Mom's cheek and cheeks and the tip of her nose were ruddy from the sun, but she was still pretty, pretty in the same unfussy way Lainey was. As I drew closer, I caught a few words of the conversation she was having. He does travel a lot. I know living closer to family would make things easier, but the girls, I... When she noticed me listening in, Mom cut herself off. Can we continue this later, Michelle? I gotta go. Mom lowered her cell and said, hi, sweetie, with a tad too much enthusiasm. Before I could ask what she and my aunt had been talking about, Lainey pulled a delicate looking shell from her pocket and began whispering into the mouth of the cream colored cylinder. When Lainey caught me staring, she said, it's my wishing shell. Okay, I said evenly, trying to pretend I wasn't a smidge envious. How had Lainey found such a perfect shell? It was called a lettered olive. Dad had taught me many shell names, lion's paw, coquina, conch. Some I had forgotten, but not the lettered olive. It was my favorite. A lettered olive for Olivia, he'd say every time we came across one. When I whisper my wishes inside, they have to come true. Lainey added dreamily. Don't count on it, I grumbled. Mom exhaled slightly and said, Olivia. A few months ago, I might have rolled my eyes at the correction. Now I sputtered an apology and as sweet as I could told Lainey it was a very nice shell. Then I waited a pause before asking, can we go somewhere today? It might be fun to visit the aquarium. What I didn't say was that I couldn't stop worrying about a turtle I'd seen on the beach the night before and that I was hoping to find answers there. I'd given it more thought and I was pretty sure we'd been walking through the aquarium sea turtle exhibit when dad told me about the light thing. Going to the aquarium wasn't mom's or Lainey's favorite thing to do, but it was an indoor activity, so at least it wouldn't worsen their sunburns. Sorry, Liv, I'm pretty wiped out. Mom stretched her arms above her head, then added, maybe another day, but she didn't sound like she meant it. So we pretty much did nothing all day, which can be super tiring too, especially when you're trying to pretend you're not worried about the way your mom picks at her food and hardly eats anything. When you know your dad doesn't want to see photos of the inside of your grandparents' beach house, but you have nothing else to send him. And when your thoughts are plagued by the sad look in a sea turtle's eye and you can't do anything about it. I thought about calling dad to ask about the turtles in the light, but I knew he'd hear the worry in my voice. It was one thing to fake cheerfulness in text messages, but there was no way I could pull off a lighthearted conversation, not with him, not now. Later that night, I returned to the beach in my favorite spot between the dunes. When I let my hands drift to my sides, I found it. In the exact same spot as the night before, my fingers sifted another mermaid tear from the sand. Wonder and awe blossomed in my heart. Sea glass rarely wash ashore on Anna Maria Island. Finding a second mermaid tear felt somehow magical. Here was another piece of sea glass, frosty and round like the first, and it felt significant, like a sign or something, like maybe somewhere deep in the ocean mermaids were weeping just for me. But that was silly, almost as silly as Lainey whispering wishes into a shell. 
I slipped the mermaid tear into my pocket, and it wasn't long before sleep started edging in on me. My eyelids felt heavy. The sound of the crashing waves was hypnotic. When a hand tapped my shoulder, I startled so hard, I nearly screamed. I didn't mean to scare you, Aiden said sheepishly as I swiveled toward him. I stared in awkward silence, absorbing all the changes for a second time. It wasn't like with my grandparents. For the most part, they looked the same, year after year. Aiden usually grew a few inches while we were apart, but this summer, this giant transformation, it was too much. It felt like he'd sprinted ahead of me and the gap between us was larger than it had ever been before. He squirmed under my scrutiny. I couldn't be certain he was blushing. The darkness cloaked his skin in a film of gray, but I suspected he was, and that at least was comforting. Hey, I said, you're back already. Aiden and his mom visited the beachcomber and his grandfather infrequently throughout the summer. I never knew when he might show up. Aiden's eyes flicked to the empty spot next to where I sat. He, if anyone liked listening to dad's stories as much as I did, it was Aiden. He'd never known his own father. I think that might have been one reason he liked hanging around us so much. He had, been, he had to be dying to know why dad wasn't here, but now he seemed afraid to ask. I had acted pretty flighty before. The problem was I still didn't know if I was ready to tackle such a difficult conversation. Have a seat, I said, and scooched over to make room beside me in the sand. I think we were both more at ease once we were facing the ocean, instead of making eye contact, for a little bit anyway, until the science beca silence became uncomfortable. He began fiddling with the Rubik's Cube he'd brought along. The clicking and movement of his fingers was familiar and soothing. He'd started cubing last summer. He was so proud when he showed Dad and me that he knew how to solve the puzzle. Not that Aiden was one to brag. I could just tell. He'd try to teach me a few algorithms he'd learned on YouTube, and I'd gotten to a point where I could unscramble the first few layers, but then summer ended. I regretted not practicing at all during the school year. You've gotten faster, I said, when each of the six sides showed only one color. There was something appealing about it, a random mess of red, green, orange, yellow, blue, and white squares being sorted and arranged neatly. It made me wish that when life got mixed up, it could be unjumbled, that it was possible for everything to be clicked back into place. Thanks. New speed cube is smoother, Aiden said. Cool. Want to scramble it for me, he asked. I took the cube and started twisting and turning the layers until the colors were all mixed up again. I wanted to apologize for bolting the day I'd arrived, and I knew I should explain my father's absence, but the words wouldn't form inside my head, let alone exit my mouth. I handed the cue back to Aiden. He took it, but didn't attempt another solve. He seemed to be waiting for me to say something. When I stayed clammed up, he said, where's your... I had to think of something to say and quit. I saw a sea turtle here last night, and the night before that, I blurted before he could finish his sentence. For a moment, I worried I might as well have been wearing a cartoon princess t-shirt, that my love of sea turtles would make me seem silly and young. But then he said, that's great. His response struck me as genuine, but also a tad disappointed. I brought up the sea turtle as a diversion, and we both knew it. Okay, we're gonna stop there, the bottom of page 33. Out of my shell. Can't wait to read more and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.